um, and some new cool products from Ronkyo. Uh, we want to, um, I got Ralph actually on the phone. You've been hearing him chatting about the Virginia weather and the generator. Well, now we're going to jump into uh, some of the cool products from Ronkyo. Ralph, I want to thank you for hopping on, and I'll let you take it from here. Woohoo! Hey, everybody. I really appreciate your time this morning. Uh, I'm sure you all had long travel to get to your home offices or your local office to get on the phone and listen to me babble. Uh, this is going to be a really quick and dirty presentation. This is uh, Ankyo getting into 70 volt for the very first time, but I think even though this is a, a uh, first try uh, dipping our toes into the water, I think we've got some incredibly solid product right out of the gate. And uh, we're going to go into the product in a little bit of detail. And just so you all know, this is a new category for me personally. I'm a home theater audio video guy. So 70 volt is completely new to me. That's why I'm going to rely a lot on Chris during this presentation. If you guys have uh, uh, very specific technical questions, Chris may be able to help you out with that. I'll do my best to help you out with that. Uh, but I'm learning this category, as some of you may be learning it as well. But I think in spite of all that, uh, it's very, very easy concept to uh, get your head wrapped around. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. And we'll take a look at the new Onkyo line called Onkyo Installation. Very cool little logo there, I gotta say, it's very catchy. So let's take a look at the actual uh, product itself. Uh, where can we put it? What can we do with it? What's it for? Literally, as the, the title says here, the possibilities are endless. There are so many applications for distributed audio. Uh, in the 12, uh, the uh, 70 volt category, uh, not the least of which gyms and spas, restaurants, uh, businesses like an uh, office park or you know a little small uh, private business, uh, clinics. Uh, there's one right across road, road tracks from me uh, where I live that is a little uh, reception lounge waiting area, about four or five different private screening rooms inside. Uh, so not a large scale uh, clinic, not on a hospital scale, but you know, uh, I'm sure we're all familiar with little clinics that we go to from time to time like that. Uh, cafes and bars, they're everywhere. You uh, can't go anywhere in the continental United States without running into a, a Starbucks or something along those lines. Uh, grocery stores, supermarkets. And of course, clothing stores, boutiques, uh, and this is just a starter. You know, there are lots of other options out there uh, in addition to this, like warehouses, for example, off the top of my head. Lots of different places that distributed audio can go into. And one of the things I'd like to point out here on this slide is that for your accounts that have traditionally just been doing safety or uh, um, security installations in uh, businesses, warehouses, wherever. These are the exactly the same types of locations that need distributed audio. And in a lot of cases, the safety and security systems that they're putting in have some sort of speaker systems integrated into that for voice alerts. Now, wherever you're running cable, for distributed uh, security and safety systems. That's where you would be running cable to for distributed audio and paging as well. So why not just run those extra cables while you're doing that in the first place? And it's a very, very minimal effort on the part of the custom integrator. Uh, and it takes very little time to get a distributed audio set up uh, compared to say a uh, security or a safety system. Those usually take a lot more tweaking. Distributed audio is really very, very straightforward as we'll see going forward. Uh, so again, if you're doing that kind of setup in the first place, why not use that uh, time to run the cables for distributed audio system? Uh, it's money in the bank. It's, it's really easy to do, really uh, not time consuming at all. Why give that money and that business to some other integrator to come in after you've done your safety and security installation to do a distributed audio and paging system? So why not just do that all in one fell swoop? So here is the lineup itself. We've got two models in the Ankyo installation line. On the left, we've got our MCA1120 mixing amplifier. And on the right, we've got our PCA1120 power amplifier. These both essentially have the same amplifiers internally. It's just a matter of the input outputs that are a little bit different between the two. Uh, on the left, we can see that the MCA1120 has Bluetooth connectivity. It has a mini jack line in, a 3.5 millimeter stereo line input has an RCA stereo line in on the back, 
Uh, and it also has two microphone inputs for push to talk type of microphones, not your traditional karaoke microphone, but a, one of those uh, uh, microphones that you might see in a grocery store or a business where they've got the little uh, flat buttons on the front of it and you press and hold and you can talk on the microphone and release the button, the microphone cuts out. We also have uh, a RCA pre out to loop whatever your input source is on that particular amplifier out to a secondary amplifier. Now they both run at two and four ohms, eight ohms. They also do 70 volt and 100 volt. Uh, so there's a lot of different power configuration options that you can run on both of these. Now you may notice on the back of them, they've got a lot of dip switches and those dip switches are to tell the unit out of the box what type of speaker load you're gonna be connecting to it and how to uh, assign the internal amplifier to whatever speakers you've got on the output stage, whether it's a 70 volt or a traditional 2, 4, or 8 ohm load. They also have uh, digital signal processing built in, which is pretty advanced. We've got dynamic loudness. We've got preset EQs, which I'll go into in a little bit of detail. Custom EQ, which I'll go into more detail later on as well. Uh, we've got RS-232 control, IR control, so you can put in uh, IR blasters, front panel lock, which is absolutely essential. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to in the last few months just getting to know the 70 volt category. That front panel lock is absolutely essential. If, for example, you've put in a distributed audio system like the Onkyo installation line into a rack or a cabinet for a client and you leave, somebody else is going to come in at some point to do some sort of other work in that facility and they're going to jostle buttons turn knobs change things and even people that work in those facilities are going to go in and try to play with the volume levels after hours parties things like that and you want to make sure that you can lock all those controls down so that whether it's accidental or intentional nobody can go in and crank it up to 11 and damage the system or uh, affect adversely how everybody is getting audio distributed throughout that building. We also have mic ducker, which is pretty cool. I'll talk about that. Manual mute, feedback suppressor, and that's just on the mixing amplifier, the MCA model. Of course, that's the only model with the mic input, so that kind of makes sense. Just so you know, this is designed literally to go into some very, very harsh, very demanding types of uh, in conditions like restaurants, for example, restaurants and bars where there's a lot of changes in temperature and humidity. Uh, they're exposed to a lot of smoke, a lot of dust, a lot of grease. These are designed with a absolutely ludicrous 70,000 hour lifespan, which is depending on how you use it, 20 to 30 years of constant always on use. So these are really, really ruggedly overbuilt products. Uh, you can really just throw them in a rack, turn them on, and walk out of the room and forget about it. Uh, they're very, very uh, the kind of product that you're not going to need to go back and service regularly. So you can really rest comfortably knowing that this is a product that you're not going to get a lot of service calls on. They will fit into racks, and a number of the uh, distributed audio custom integrators that I've talked to recently. Uh, this is actually kind of unusual from what I've been finding out in a lot of the different product lines out there for distributed audio and paging systems. A lot of the products out there are not rack mountable, but when you look at safety and security types of products, whether it's DVRs or uh, ethernet switches, uh, those are all rack mountable, of course, so why not make your distributed audio products rack mountable as well? Now, you do have the option for a one rack kit or a two unit rack kit uh, available. So it's, it's all called the IRK44-3. And again, as you can see here, you can do one unit by itself. If that's all you need, great and we've got a rack mounting option for you. But if you want to do multiple units side by side or even stacking them, uh, as we'll see later on, you do have a variety of options for rack mounting. And talking about rack mounting, uh, we've got a really cool, literally, uh, cooling solution in these units. Uh, you can really stack them top to bottom, side to side, flush mount, without affecting the airflow internally. So as you can see here, it draws in air from the left side of the unit and vents it out the right side. So there's an uninterrupted airflow, even if you've got units stacked side by side as we see here. 
So it's pretty innovative and it does a great job of maintaining that ridiculously long lifespan. So what are the key features on Onku installation? Well, first and foremost, the powerful DSP that we've got on board. And that has to do a lot with the preset EQs and the adjustable EQ settings that we have available for you. And we'll show you that in detail. Integration access, that's pretty key. We already know it has RS-232 and IR, but we'll find out a little bit more about integration access. Also, the compact amplification. These are very, very small units. If you're familiar with uh, rack mounting systems, then you know that one rack, uh, one RU, height and half width wide, is actually pretty small. Uh, if you get your hands on one of these, you'll see just how small they are. A little bit larger than a trade size paperback novel, uh, but weigh a hell of a lot more. Uh, they are just really, really ruggedly built. One of the things that a lot of the custom integrators in the field have been commenting on is uh, the quality of the build when they're talking to me about some of the other brands that they've been installing is they're these just big empty plasticky lightweight shells that don't really feel like they uh, uh, are built by somebody who really pays attention to the details and they don't feel that way about the oi product they really like the way it's built full and balanced music at any volume level Preset background music modes perfectly match the intended mood of the installation environment. This literally means that we have three presets built in for three of the best brands, best selling brands of custom in wall in ceiling speakers out there. And that gives us a normal mode, which is, I guess, kind of similar to what you would want to listen to on a pair of headphones or on a stereo system at home. Uh, pretty well balanced mids, highs, bass level. Nothing too uh, boomy, nothing too sharp and ear splitting. We have a calm mode preset. And again, these are all accomplished through the dip switches on the back of the unit. Or if you go into, as we'll see later on, our custom EQ option, uh, the calm mode, relax sound, cafe, hospital venues, kind of muted just a little bit, not too high and bright. Uh, doesn't have a lot of boomy bass, just something that you'd really want for background music keep things mellow. You also have a lively sound, a little bit sharper, a little bit peppier, uh, great for gyms, clubs, um, outdoor cafes, things like that. So the three brands or the, the three models, I should say, the two brands and three models of the best selling in wall in ceiling loudspeakers right now are a two by Bose and one by JBL. We do have presets built in that we got from JBL and Bose on what they think they feel their speakers sound the best at, what frequencies uh, in EQ settings really make their speakers sound the best. Uh, but we've actually been out in the field consistently talking to a lot of the other speaker manufacturers, getting their EQ presets uh, preferences, and we're going to be building those in in future firmware updates. So it's literally a simple thing as simple as going into our uh, EQ program, which you'll see in just a few more slides, and just picking the model speaker that you want to sound its best so that you don't have to take time and go in and fiddle around with the EQ settings yourself, and just pick that particular model and brand of speaker, and you'll get the best results very, very quickly and efficiently. So here's our custom EQ. Uh, now, this is accessed via a bit of free PC software that there's a link for this software later on in the presentation, and you can get that on the uh, Pioneer Onkyo installation website. Uh, this is accomplished via a PC USB to serial cable. So uh, you would plug that in USB on one end of your computer and the serial end to the other end would go into our MCA or PCA amplifiers. And you would do your EQ presets here. So you would see, for example, uh, it's kind of hard to see on this particular slide, but up in the top left where you see that one column that's been highlighted in yellow, it's generically right now for this example, we've got brand one, two, brand three, brand four, brand four, uh, five, and so on. You would pick that particular brand of speaker and the model, and it would give you an automatic preset for that particular uh, make and model speaker. Or you can go in and monkey around with the 12 band custom EQ to your heart's content and get any particular sound quality that you prefer or your client might prefer. 
Smooth automatic transition between music and paging. Uh, this is most commonly encountered when you go to, say, a concert, an outdoor concert, indoor concert, where uh, you've got somebody that's testing the microphones before the main act comes up on stage. We all hear that pop and squeal and the feedback. We have what's called mic ducking technology, which means that any time the microphone is turned on, with that push to talk microphone where you press the keypad to turn the microphone on, it rolls off the audio that was playing in the background and mutes the any feedback that might occur between the microphone and nearby speakers. So again, this is really for the push to talk type of microphone switches. And uh, that eliminates your feedback, that howling noise that you can get in those sharp squeals and pops. Talking about the system integration, on the back panels, we've got the IRN and RS-232. We also have auto sensing power, auto power on. So here, for example, I've got a Sonos Connect. If I've got that plugged into either the front input or the back input on the uh, MCA or the PCA amplifiers, then anytime I activate that device, I start sending audio to that device. If that amplifier, for whatever reasons, has been put into the standby mode, it will turn it back on and start playing back through that amplifier. We also have the ability to connect external volume controls. We are talking distributed audio after all, so if you've got speakers way out in Timbuktu, for example, if you've got a business office where you've got indoor distributed audio, but there's an outdoor lounge area where you've got outdoor speakers, you'd like to be able to have some sort of volume control out there too as well in case you have, for example, a company party outside a company barbecue. You want to be able to turn the volume up a little bit. You have the option of connecting an outdoor volume control. Now we also play nice with all of your favorite third-party custom control systems. They're going to build their own modules for these. We're not doing any of our own modules, just so you know. Uh, we don't do that. So we're providing the OI product to these companies and they're building their own modules for the RS-232 and IR control. So let's just take a quick look at some different ways, not all by any means, but some different ways that we can set up OI product in different types of uh, uh, environments out there for distributed audio. So in this particular case, we're looking at a classroom or a conference. It's a single room space. Here we've got a single amplifier. We can drive two 8 ohm loudspeakers and four 70 volt speakers simultaneously with wired and wireless microphones. So people around the room want to be able to talk and be heard regardless of where they are in the room, uh, like a presenter up at the front at a whiteboard or a projection screen and other people scattered around the conference table that are going to ask questions. So how do we going to get this accomplished? We'll have a laptop, for example, plugged into the audio stereo line input on the back of the amplifier. We'll hook up a microphone. That's the section on the back of the amplifier that the microphones get plugged into. Let's do a wireless microphone too, so people up front or around the room can not be tied down to a wired speaker. And then here are my eight ohm in-wall speakers, maybe up front by the uh, front projection screen. But around the rest of the room, we now have our in-ceiling speakers, which would traditionally be 70 volt speakers.
Hey, it's Rolf. I'm back. Apologize for that. Let's see again, Ralph. Can everybody hear me okay? I got to that time. Great. <laughs> okay, I'm on a completely different computer right now. I apologize for that, folks. Thank you for your patience. Okay. Where were we? Well, we were in a classroom or a conference room, and we've got our audio distributed now through not only a pair of 8-ohm in-wall speakers, but also 70-volt in-ceiling speakers. So with just one of these amplifiers, we can accommodate this kind of environment, classroom or office conference room, meeting room type of uh, spaces. But what if we need more? What if we have more places to go and we want audio distributed throughout those? Well, a single amplifier can drive two 8-ohm speakers and four 70-volt speakers simultaneously. We know that. But what if we want to connect a wireless device such as a iPad over Bluetooth? Well, we can certainly do that because the MCA has Bluetooth connectivity. We can also run 70 volt in ceiling speakers uh, for indoor use and for an outdoor patio use, great for a uh, uh, Starbucks or a cafe or restaurant that has an outdoor seating area. We can also do eight ohm outdoor speakers. And of course, in that space, as we alluded to earlier, we would need an outdoor volume control. So here we've got that plugged into the back as well. So we have two different ways of controlling the volume here. We've got our main volume control uh, in the uh, indoor area, of course, on the MCA. And then we also have the outdoor volume control in addition to that. Now, in a restaurant uh, that has a bar area, for example, we can do two amplifiers. We've got our MCA 1120 mixing amplifier. We've got our music source, CD player, AM, FM tuner, receiver, whatever your audio source is, plugged into the back of the MCA 1120. We've got a wired microphone for paging. Maybe you want to uh, communicate with the uh, uh, chef in the back preparing meals. We've got our 70 volt in ceiling speakers. We've got four 15 watt speakers scattered throughout the uh, main dining room area. We also have a wireless mic plugged in, and that wireless microphone could be used in the bar. In addition, we've got a PCA 1120 power amplifier. Now we're going to loop the output from the MCA into the PCA. Just we all remember, this is mono only. So even though there's a stereo left and right input on these receivers, they're still only amplifying in mono. So the pre-outs are always going to be mono. Now off the PCA, we've got 70 volt in ceiling speakers for the bar area and on wall volume control there as well too. Now, an outdoor landscape where you've got uh, quite a large area, you need a lot of speakers run around, and you also want to add a little bit of bass. There are, of course, in-ground and uh, above-ground outdoor subwoofers in 70 volt. So let's take a look at how we would do that. We've got my cell phone connecting over Bluetooth to the MCA. I've got eight, this time we've got eight 70 volt outdoor speakers running into the 1120. And then on my PCA, still have to loop that audio over to the PCA from the MCA. I've got an 8 ohm outdoor subwoofer. It's got two of those. So this is just letting you know what kind of um, power requirements you're, you're looking at here between the two. So you can do a lot of mixing and matching of 70 volt and uh, traditional 8 ohm speakers. Here we're getting into the extremes. Four amplifiers to drive multiple speakers and subwoofers for large spaces. Got my music source into the MCA. Wireless microphone so I can take that mic anywhere I want. Eight 70 volt in ceiling speakers. Here's my looping amp, my PCA. Run the audio from the MCA to the PCA. 
I've got eight ohm in ceiling subwoofers now. I can do one 60, uh, 120 watt or two uh, 60 watt. Got another PCA 1120. Loop the audio out from there. An eight ohm subwoofer, a single one at 120 watts there. And of course, at the very end of the chain, I've got some eight ohm speakers, two by 60 watts. So for a large gym area, which are traditionally just one big giant empty space, uh, I can cover a lot of territory with some very high quality sound. Any questions so far? Uh, we're still just a little bit under time, and we'll just get into the custom EQ. Um, I don't see the, uh, the sidebar right now that has questions because that's going to block the view of my slide. Um, but just if you have questions, just put them in there, and we'll get to them at the end, or you can unmute yourselves and shout them out as we go along. There is a free PC app called Terminal App. Uh, they call it TerraTerm on the website. But with the Terminal app, uh, once you've got that downloaded, you want to choose Serial Connection. That's how you're going to interface with the uh, MCA amplifier. Then you're going to choose the USB Serial port. Then OK, and Terminal app is ready to use. So this is what you'll get on your computer screen once you've done that. There's an attached .xlsx file, an Excel spreadsheet file. You open that up in the terminal app. And again, on the left, you would see uh, the uh, EQ band, the 12 band EQ that you want to play with. And you'll also see uh, options for the different uh, brands of speakers and the presets that you can choose yourself. So this is where you would go in and play around with the sound levels to get them exactly where you want to for the different types of speakers and the different arrangements of speakers that you've got. And here's an example of that in action. So if I just go back, if we look at band one, originally that EQ is set to the uh, one kilohertz range. And now we've got it set to a high pass frequency at 120 hertz. We've got a negative 3 dB dip at band 5, and so on. So very customizable, pretty easy to use, pretty easy to figure out, not too complicated. But once you've got everything where you want it, uh, how do you save it? Well, you copy the red area. So you right click, copy, and then you go into the uh, uh, clipboard section of the terminal app and then you just right click and paste or click OK and then you're done. And it's really that simple. Not very complicated. So just final notes for you on the terminal app. Uh, functions like the EQ, low pass filter, high pass filter, and so on, changing speaker loads, these can be set using the dip switches on the back. As we go forward in time, full custom EQ settings, front panel lock, uh, RS-232 commands, those can also be done in the terminal app. Uh, we're going to continue to add new functionality in future firmware updates, uh, getting back to other brands of speakers that we're in the process of getting EQ presets for. Those will be added to the TerraTerm app in future firmware updates as well, too. So as I said, that was quick and dirty, really not much to it, pretty straightforward. Uh, this is where we take questions and answers. And also, just so you know, in the back or at the end of uh, this presentation, I'm going to email out a copy of this with some more detailed Q&A. Uh, let's see. Oh, there is a question. You have one? Just... Yes. Okay. Well, we did have one question come in. Uh, it says, I'm interested to know if the mixer unit will allow for volume control of the internal amplifier. The mixer unit being the MCA, uh, that gives you volume control for that amplifier. And then there are, let me go back to an illustration of that. Let me just close that down. Let me go back. 
And just so you guys are aware, um, another question came in while we were waiting. It's the availability of this product. Capital Sales does have these products in stock, so they're available today. Yeah, they're available. So if you look at the front here of the MCA, I don't know if you can see my mouse cursor floating around, but we've got our line one, line two, mic one, and mic two, and then we have the main volume control. So any one of these you would use to uh, adjust your inputs uh, to the maximum level that you want it to go and no higher than that. And then this would be your main volume control. So if you want to go in and crank it up for everybody, then it would be, depending on how you have like line one, line two, mic one, mic two, as you move around the building, setting up all the different levels and listening to the speakers uh, and listening to your different audio sources, is this at the same level in this room as it is in the other room? Uh, that's where you would do these type of adjustments here. And once you've got that figured out, uh, then this would be the main volume control for the whole building, uh, depending on how many of these units you've got in place. And then this, the PCA, um, if you had one of these in hand in front of you and you were playing with the volume control, you would find that there's an indent right at the 12 o'clock position. And then you could set that so that none of the other zones would ever get any louder than that particular position there. Uh, I, don't, I hope that answers your question in that sense. So you've got a volume control on each unit uh, for the amplifiers built in, but as you start daisy chaining them, then you can adjust the volume independently on the daisy chained PCA amplifiers. And uh, just to clarify, or not to clarify, to expand on that, um, he just came back uh, asking actually IR and or uh, serial control. Uh, there is IR codes as well as RS-232 codes. So if you are tying this in with a universal remote or control system, you can adjust the volume as well through that control system. Right, right. Now, it is only IR or RS-232, so there is no network port, at least on these devices. Uh, so that's going to limit, obviously, you're going to have to use a third-party control system if you want to control it via iOS or Android. Right. So, for example, if you had a Control 4 system, uh, obviously, they're one of our partners with this. So you can do I, uh, IP commands for Control 4. So they would have to build their own module to allow you to do IP commands to these devices through their uh, networking station. Uh, and then also another one, um, what other speakers are you looking to add with to the EQ? And I can actually speak to this as well as uh, they have the ability, Onkyo has the ability to preload custom presets right to the USB port. So if there is a specific brand, you know, that you'd really like to have Onkyo to add to that custom EQ uh, or get custom EQ for, you can let capital sales managers know or Onkyo um, and uh, we can request that from the engineers to load a custom preset. But if you know those presets, it is also easy enough to, like you said, show it right on the, uh, through the Terra term um, to load a custom preset right into that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and then, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that I see one other question. Will Ankyo have its own app? Uh, the answer to that simply is no, uh, not in this generation because we don't have in built in any kind of Ethernet control to these. So going back to those third-party custom control solutions, whether it's URC or Control for Crestron, uh, they would have to build their own uh, app for or modules for their own apps. So whatever they're using for their control interface, whether it's on a touch screen or something else, uh, that would be their own design. Uh, but we don't have any kind of way to do uh, an external IP-based kind of uh, mobile device to these. Yep. And if you guys are looking for a iOS or Android app to control this, uh, we at Capital have some options for that. We can look at Pro Control or RTI um, or other control systems to be able to easily integrate into this. So if you need an iOS or Android app, feel free to reach out to us. Capital can help you with that. And the next question is, does it support 8 ohms? Uh, yes, and it yes, it does. It has 70 volt and or 8 ohms right into it. 
Yeah, I do need to adjust that slide, but thanks for pointing that out. Good questions. Uh, is there any other questions, guys? Yeah, it's great questions, and I know how it works out. As soon as we get off the webinar, uh, the question is going to start rolling in, whether it's you know, right after we get done, at the end of the day, next week, next month, whenever a project comes up and all of a sudden you get 70 volt, uh, also, or you need a distributed audio system throughout where two or four speakers are in work, or uh, maybe it's an oblong shaped um, room where you can't get that nice stereo signal. It's much nicer to go to mono and have an even coverage than to have a stereo that it's a stereo and not have only hearing the left or the right. Um, so, some great applications for uh, 7 volt systems in the residential market and obviously the commercial market. Um, so, if you guys have any questions, you can also you can reach out to your account manager capital, myself, uh, the guys at Onkyo. Um, we're all here to help you guys out. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, without you, we're nothing. So you guys know more about this than uh, I do at the moment. So I really am going to rely upon your expertise. So any questions that you've got, please let us know so that I can make sure that I communicate those with the engineer because you guys may be encountering things in the field. You have needs and requirements for your accounts that we're unaware of. And when we can get those addressed, then we'll have better product all the way around, better support, more importantly, all the way around. So we really appreciate uh, any assistance you can give us since we're so new to this category. Definitely. Well, if you guys don't have any more questions, uh, I wanna thank you guys for taking time out of your day um, to learn about the new Onkyo 70 volt uh, mixer amps and power amplifiers. Some very cool new products from Onkyo. Uh, and if you guys have any other questions, again, feel free to reach out to Capital. Feel free to reach out to Onkyo. We're all here to help you guys out, and we'd love to hear about whatever projects you're working on. So uh, if there isn't any other questions, Ralph, I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to teach us about this new line. Well, appreciate it, Chris. Thanks for the opportunity, and thank you, everybody. Well, since I don't see any other questions, I want to thank you guys for hopping on, and uh, I'll let you guys get back to it. And I hope to hear from you guys soon. Take care, everyone. Thanks, Chris.